Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Wall and Wall Art. And today I'm gonna to be talking about drawing and inking hair. Now artists, when they draw hair, they have straight lines, they have wavy lines, and then they have curvy lines. And then there's uh, hair that has like a solid black area that goes into a white area. And some of the grays that goes in between, I'm gonna be talking about that. So, some, so the tool I use is the Aquash watercolor brush pen, where I'll use that pen and then I'll dip it into a bottle of ink. Some of you are gonna ask, do you fill that barrel with ink? I don't fill that barrel with ink. I just dip it and I'll continue using it. I find there's more control that way. So if you wanted to try using this tool yourself, uh, I added links below so you can order it for yourself and give that a try. So without further ado, here we go. Get it? Here we go. Now check out the video. Now here, this project was for Marvel Comics Hulk, issue number 717. My inks over Carlo Barberi's pencils. Um, so here, I'm starting out using a micron. This is a micron size 0 0.01. Now, if you look at the micron, you'll notice that the tip has a, a lot of black ink on the sides. You see that? It's kind of a what happens when I refill my micro microns. Uh, I have a video on my channel, uh, click click my uh, videos and then look for the video that shows people how to uh, fill microns. So usually I'll, I'll, when the microns I have is uh, out of ink, I'll go back in there and I'll, I'll refill it myself. And then when, when I refill it and then I'm starting to use it, sometimes there's a little bit of ink flow coming out, just like what you see here on the tip of the micron right over there, well actually on the side, Near that the first cylinder area so there's ink a little bit coming out but that's normal so i'm still uh using it that way but the ink it's i mean you see a glob of ink there but it's not gonna drop so after you get out those little tiny loop areas on here originally i used the micron because the micron can get a really fine thin line and then i can do loops really quickly so after doing all those little teeny loops like you see on the tips of her hair. I go and get the Aguash uh, Pentel watercolor brush. Now this watercolor brush originally is used for watercolors. It's just a brush with a barrel that you can unscrew the barrel, like on, on the right side of that barrel. You unscrew it, you add water into it, and then you would draw with watercolor pencils. You draw water in watercolor pencils and it's, use this, squeeze the water that flows water outside of the brush and it'll make those watercolor pencils look like watercolors. But I use it for, for inking. Uh, the reason I use it for inking is because this brush is synthetic, it's a synthetic brush and also it doesn't cost as much as a Windsor Newton brush or a Raphael brush. It's, probably one third of the price and then when they break I don't really try to like fix it or anything I'll, I'll just throw it away toss it away and then use another uh, to me I, I call it the disposable uh, brush because I just go through it like a lot and then when it falls apart I don't really I don't really mind that it falls apart uh, another good thing about this brush is that it keeps this tip very sharp for a very long time. Like I don't have to clean it. I don't really wash it. When I'm done inking, I just put it away. I just cap it. And after I'm done like inking, I would just like not even wash it. I, would, I don't even wash it at all. Like I would just cap it and put it away. Next day uh, when I'm ready to start inking again, I just pull up uh, that brush again, maybe crack it a little bit, just so all the hard fibers that's uh, all the hard hardened ink that's on tip will loosen up and I'll dip the ink in and I'll start uh, inking again. And once you start inking, it will start flowing again. Uh, someone uh, in, in the past commented, uh, do you wash a brush? I don't really wash this brush. Now the same reason I don't wash this brush is because uh, you don't need to wash this brush. It's a synthetic uh, synthetic fiber brush you don't really need to wash that if you have a sable hair or horse hair brush you would need to wash that and condition that so here i don't really wash it at all just like um if you buy these um these uh these, these brushes that has ink in them like it's already pre-filled with ink do you go do you use it and wash wash the brush you don't you just use it until all the ink is out and you toss it away so this is kind of the same thing. I can always fill it with ink, but I don't like 
filling it with ink. And the reason for that is sometimes we, we have ink in the barrel and you slightly squeeze it, there's a lot of ink flow that comes out. So I try not to fill it with ink and I'll use this and I'll dip the ink. This way when I'm dipping ink, I know exactly how much ink is on the tip of the brush and I know how long it's gonna last. Sometimes if you have too much ink and it's flowing out too much, you're gonna get a blob of ink and some of your thin lines will become too thick or too wide or too fat you don't really want that so i personally i like to uh, uh dip this brush while I'm making just like with any brush i like to dip it uh, or you can use a, a little dropper to fill the brush but i, I like to uh, dip the brush when i'm using a quill i like to feed it but when i'm using uh, this brush i like to dip it into a, a, a ink well Okay, so here, when I'm inking here, usually what I like to do is I'll start inking all the sharp areas first. Inking all the, the, the tip areas. And then as I'm, as I'm doing that, I contour all the taper lines, making sure that each time I contour, they're consistently curved with one another. You don't want your taper lines to be going into one direction and then the other lines going to a different direction. Uh, at the same time, you also don't want your taper lines to be one thicker than another or one smaller than another. Another thing is you should, some, you should space them pretty similar to each other. The distance between each taper line should be somewhat uh, similar to each other. You don't want one to be too far away or one to be too, th too thin. Now, when you look at these taper lines, you'll notice that uh, it starts from a sharp tip, and then when it goes into the, to the black, there's a white tip. The, the, negative, the negative space, it creates a white tip coming be in between the taper lines. So that was that, that hair, and now I'm going to ink another uh, character, the back of her hair. So right here I'm making uh, some of the finer lines on the back. Now you notice what I did there, I'll go thicker, and then as I go further down, I'll go thinner. Because you want those lines to somewhat fade. You, you want that effect to have where the hair is thick, and it, as it goes towards the skin area where there's no hair, it kind of fades off thinner. So when you're inking hair, uh, or when you're inking anything else, you want to control how much pressure you use on your brush. Um, the harder you press down, the thicker the lines are. The lighter you press, the thinner the lines. Uh, I would say for the light lines, don't even press. Just kind of glide your pen or your nib or your brush across the board. And then when you're gliding just the tip, you can get a really fine line. Uh, just glide your arm across the board. So I'm making some of the face and then more of her hair. And as I'm making the hair, again, I like starting from the tip area first, like the really sharp points. And then as I'm going to the dark area, you can just press down more. Like when you're, when I'm making and I'm using the tip, uh, there's, a, there's, there's a good control there, but when I'm pressing down, there's more control. So I can contour that curve exactly the way I want it to be contoured. Now you also notice that when I'm inking uh, hair, I would try to ink all in one direction first. A lot of times when I'm inking, I will use two hands. Uh, I'm, I'm inking with my right hand, and then with my left hand, I'm using that to turn the Bristol board around. So think of it this way, when I'm, when I'm working, the Bristol board, the comic book art board, is on a pottery wheel. It's, it's constantly spinning. Uh, the more I spin it, the more time it takes for me to finish the project. So what I do is I, I'll try to ink uh, in one direction first. Like I'll ink everything that goes towards that direction, going from thick to thin. And then when I don't see anything else, then I'll turn the paper and then I'll continue doing that with those taper lines or the sharp lines. So as you can see, I'm, I'm going from the thin lines, going uh, towards uh, away from my from my body uh, some artists when they ink they like to pull the brush towards their own body i like to push away which means i'm starting from the bottom and i'm pushing the brush upwards just like this just like that so we'll do that again we'll push down and it's going away from my body uh the reason i'm more comfortable with with that is because all my life i've been drawing i've been writing left to right 
you know how you write uh, letters or how you write uh, like step paragraphs or whatever you with a pencil uh, all your life you're trained writing left to right so naturally when I picked up the uh, drawing pencil or brush my hand just naturally goes from left to right left to right or bottom to up so that's why I'm comfortable with going from bottom to up uh, to top so right here I'm gonna do more taper lines in between now right here you notice that I added a few uh, white lines in between or I inked around it those were accidental mistakes I was just gonna fill it in but as I was doing that I kind of liked how it looked so I left it there okay so I'm gonna continue doing more of those tip lines okay now when I'm making here I'm concentrating on each each uh, each line uh, adding a line here adding a line there and when I'm making I would go through uh, the flow I would continue inking the whole hair even if it's behind other hair just to make sure your hair is consistent the worst thing is to do is when you're inking a line behind another line or if you're inking a piece of hair that's behind another hair and you're only inking the top and then you come back and ink the bottom the flow is consistent you want the flow of the hair to look consistent if it's not consistent it, it looks jarring so make sure when you inky hair or inky hands or anything make sure if the lines is underneath another object make sure it continuously flow uh, from one end to another so here i'm filling in the blacks when i fill in the blacks is really random oh notice that what i do here like I, I did a few uh stroke lines uh the reason i did that is to make sure that the tip of my brush can make a tip sometimes when you eat too long the tip kind of like uh, frays out and you won't get that sharp tip anymore so i'll look for a black area on the artwork and i'll kind of like so spin the brush a little bit or draw a few lines make sure that I can get a sharp line and then when I feel that it can be a sharp line then I'll go back and I'll start doing the taper work because you know when I'm making those sharp lines and then just testing them out later on I'm going to fill it with black anyway so it doesn't make a difference if I'm testing it out there you can always uh, grab a scratch paper or another piece of paper and kind of test it there but just to save time when you're working especially if you're working under uh, deadlines you, you you don't want to like mess around grabbing your scratch paper you just kind of want to test your inks uh, on another area that has a, a large amount of black and then later on when you fill it in you don't really see it uh, afterwards so that's her hair this hair is complete so i'll go back in there and look for any spots that uh, i didn't fill in i'll just fill those in like that and there it is and then now i'm dipping my brush right there just dipping in the ink bottle and then here's the hulk here's the hulk's hair so i'm going to start uh, inking all the curvy ones first going from bottom to top and then i'll turn the page and then i'll continue adding more lines okay and when you're adding lines you want to contour those lines you want those lines to be smooth okay you want them to be consistent and you want them to curve in the right direction the better your curves the more consistent your lines the better your work will look okay now as i'm making these lines i'll go from thin to thick to thin those lines are called dagger lines what i'm doing is i'm i'm controlling the brush and i'm adding uh, pressure to the brush or i'm lifting up pressure where i'm landing the tip of the brush where it starts from a really thin area and then when i press down it goes thicker and then when i release pressure it goes thin again those lines where it goes from thin to thick and thin those are called dagger lines okay so i'm pulling the brush here making more of the hulk's uh, head uh, filling it in at a side go now you notice uh if you some artists still like to draw all the outlines first they'll ink in all the outsides and then uh, they'll come back later and then they'll have uh, an assistant or or maybe they'll come back themselves and then they'll fill in the blacks themselves they'll f like cover up everything in blacks i don't use an assistant everything i do i do on my own uh i enjoy doing backgrounds backgrounds is one of the things i do first uh after i'm after i'm done inking backgrounds i like uh inking in the face that's why in this video all the faces of the characters are done uh, the next thing i like to do is uh the hands after the hands then i'll start inking the hair and this this is my fourth step so i will ink the backgrounds first next step is the faces 
then the hands, uh, and then I would do the hair. Like I, it's like an assembly line where I do one step at a time. And the reason I do that is because I can concentrate on the background and make all the background look good. At the same time, I can also concentrate on the faces and make all the faces look good. And I can concentrate on fingers and make all the fingers look good. I think fingers and hands are two of the most important things that, uh, to me, that a reader looks at. Like when someone is looking at a comic book page, the first thing they'll look at is the character's face. I look. I like to look at the character's face, and I also like to look at uh, the hands, the gestures, and also the background. So I try to make those as accurately as possible. And then after that step, then I'll come back and I'll do the hair. Uh, with the hair, you see that I'm adding extra lines, adding uh, extra hair, a uh, loose hair uh, every now and then. It always looks. It always. It always looks good. Okay, right now I, I'll add a line and I'll fill it in. Oh yeah, back to why I like to fill in the blacks as I'm making. Uh, for me, I like to fill in the blacks as I'm making because I feel that it's one step less to do because I'm I'm here anyways. I might as well just fill it in. Uh, other artists who just draws the outline and comes back to fill it, to me that feels like they're doubling up the work. Like for example, you're drawing two lines or you're drawing a square and then you say, oh, I'm gonna come back later and I'm going to fill it in and then you continue to do all the other lines. So when you're done with all the outlines, uh, you come back with a brush and then you're starting to fill in the area. You're going back to me. I think you're going back to that area twice. And in a way, I think you're kind of wasting time. So what I, what I do is I'll ink in the outline. And when I'm done with the outline, I go back in and fill it in right then and there because my hand is already there. My paper is already adjusted to the right angle. Why not just fill in the blacks right after I do the outlines of the areas that I eat? Because like that, I don't have to go back and then twist the paper, turn the paper, uh, look for the area and re-ink the area. So I think this saves time, like just inking the outline and coming back and just fill it in uh, at the same time. Okay, so more inking the side of here. Again, I'm going from bottom to top. Okay, add, uh, breaking up some of the lines. Uh, the penciler there uh, just drew like a, a, a chunk of lines, like just a chunk of black, but I like adding a few lines every so often if I can. Like the eyebrows, I like adding extra lines just so it looks like uh, uh, hair on the eyebrow or the sideburns or the top of the hair. I would add as many as I can just to make it look uh, more realistic. Okay, remember we are filling the eyebrows. Okay, and then here I'm gonna ink around those areas. Now, as I'm inking, every time I ink like a white area like that, I think of a, a football. So I would just contour a concave contour line and then a convex contour line. That's the easiest way. Just curve downwards and then another one that curves upwards. Okay, so more. Notice I'm inking all the areas that's on top first. Again, I'm not, that's because I'm inking away from me. I'm going from bottom to top. Now here's some uh, taper lines. Keep them consistent. Now when you're doing taper lines, you want the the tip to somewhat start in a pattern. You don't want one tip to be longer and then the next one to be short and the next one to be higher. You want them to be in somewhat of a pattern. Either they're all starting in the same area or they're curving in the same area. And at the same time, when you're doing those taper lines, if you look at the, the negative triangle, not the tips of the black, but the tips of the white that's going into black, you want that to be a nice fine tip and you want those to be consistent as well. So when you're doing uh, taper lines on hair or on muscle or anything, uh, concentrate on where the point of those black starts and where it ends and wherever it ends, the tip of the white, the negative space should be consistent with one another that's right next to each other. Okay, more hair over here. Okay, so far so good. Okay, and I'm filling it in as I go. Yeah, so inking hair, if, you, if you're picking up the brush for the first time and you never really like inking hair, it's good practice to learn 
as much as you can because once you know how to use a brush inking is so much easier i remember the first time i learned how to use a brush i did not like using a brush at all it was so hard to use i couldn't control where i want the brush to be sometimes the lines will be thicker sometimes it'll be too thin and sometimes it's wobbly that's one thing that you have to be careful about uh when i'm inking lines as smooth i'm i'm moving that as quick as I can because the faster you draw your line the faster you ink your line the smoother that line gets now if you're looking at the looking at the tip of the brush and you're drawing that line and you're looking at the tip you're gonna have you're gonna get a wobbly line so what I'm making usually I look at the tip where like right here I'll, I'll look at where I want the tip to start and then my eye will look at where I want the brush to end I never Again, I repeat, I never look at the tip of the brush as I'm inking. I'm only looking at the the starting point of, of the pencil line and the ending point of where I want the brush to go. And my hand will automatically draw that smooth line. Okay, so I never look at, I, my eyes never travel with the brush. My eyes only look at the tip of the brush, uh, the tip of the pencils where it's supposed to start and then I start inking it there and then my eye while I'm looking after I look at the tip of the pencil area I look at where I want the tips uh, the brush to go and then my hand will automatically ink that line okay so more tapering adding some extra white lines in between separating uh, uh, lines breaking up some of the black so there's uh, more detail in between uh, contouring correctly now this is the back of Hulk's head so here this is a uh, towards the uh, the neck area so here i'm feathering very lightly when i feather lightly i can get a really thin brush really thin line going really i'm just gliding the brush right across the pencil, uh right across the board okay so usually when i'm looking at the lines that i'm making the lines i'm really focused and i'm concentrated on uh making that line but when i'm filling in the black area it's more uh, relaxed so I, I kind of relax a little bit uh with my hand and with my eyes and then i'll just fill it in and i'll go back and then i'll start uh, inking some of those uh sharp tips so here i'll ink that uh, line first but then uh, i'll go back in there and ink those taper lines and i want those taper lines to have a nice sharp tip now you'll notice that I'm constantly turning the board and that's normal. I'm always turning the Bristol board as frequently as I can. Just uh, so so the lines will match up my hand so my hand can ink those lines smoother. Now when you're inking, you should pay attention to your uh, inks. Uh, usually inks like this, it'll take maybe a good 10, 15 seconds for it to dry before you can put your hand on top of it. So when I first started inking, I I had a hard time uh, understanding the inks. I, I've been doing this inking thing for, for a while now. So I know, I have a good feeling of when the inks are dried. So when it's dry, I can put my hand on top. So I'll turn it away from the bottom of my hand so my hand doesn't touch uh, any of the inks. So I'm sure that I, uh, I won't smudge any of the, the inked area. And when you're uh, inking a lot, you get used to it. You understand, you understand your tools. You understand your inks. You understand uh, how fast or how long it takes for the inks to dry. Uh, if you apply too much ink, you kind of have a understanding of how that works. Okay. The more you understand your tools, just like with anything, the more you understand your tools, the more you understand your craft, the better you get at it, and it becomes an art form. Right over here, and we're gonna continue inking more of the lines go really thin and then go back and then push that tip okay you notice that sometimes i'll i'll go twice i'll get two lines and i'll fill in uh the inside and, and that's pretty good too that's normal uh i can always press down really hard to get that really thick line but i like to just go and draw two lines and then fill it in because i don't really want to push my brush really hard if you push hard, it's not going to damage it, but it's going to make your the tip of your brush a little bit wider. So when you ink the next line, that line could be a little bit wider and it might take you a little bit longer to get that uh, finer sharp tip. So me, for myself, I like to ink in two lines, one line here, one line on the bottom, and then fill in the rest later. 
Okay, and again, this is I'm using a uh, Pentel Aquash uh, uh, watercolor brush, and this is uh, they make this in three different sizes: a fine, a medium, and a broad. Uh, I only use the the fine one. I don't, I don't use the the medium one or the, or the white one. I just if I wanted something white, I just ink in two lines and then fill it in with this brush. So I don't really have a need for uh, getting a white brush unless I'm filling in a large area. But you know, using this brush, the synthetic brush, I just go back and dip a lot of ink and then just fill in blacks just like that. Yeah, these brushes they last for a very long time. Uh, sometimes years, years before they fall apart. So they last pretty long. And very low maintenance, don't need to clean. Uh, just dip it, dip and go. Uh, just when you're done, just cap it, uh, put it away. And then when you're ready to work again the next day or... Now, if you're gonna leave it uh, capped for a month, I would recommend cleaning it. Cause if you don't, uh, I, I, I ink almost uh, every day. I do comic book work almost uh, every day. So I'm constantly using this. So it doesn't really dry up on, on me and it just doesn't work anymore. Uh, when it does dry up on me, I'll just press down on using this brush. I'll press on a piece of paper, crack that tip, and then I'll start uh, using using it again. And I'm very rarely going to need to brush, uh, clean this. Okay, so right now I'm making uh, the top of Hulk's head. This is a bigger uh, panel where Hulk is uh, covering his face. I think this is the part where the Hulk is uh, transforming to uh, uh, to the human side. The monster transforming to a human side, so he's covering up his hand. No, he's using he's using his hand to cover up, up his face. So again, I at first I dipped ink and it was too much ink, so I used that to fill in some of the uh, black areas, just so I know there's a right consistency. And then I'll practice inking a few lines to make sure that I can get a thin line. And once all that works out, then I'm going to start uh, inking some of the the taper lines here. And then I try to follow the pencil as best as I can, adding more details. And I'll try not to mess up any of the pencils. Uh, respect the pencils that you're inking as much as you can. Without the pencils, your ink work is, is nothing. So try to do uh, your ink work as best as you can. It's always important to enhance the pencils and not take away from the pencils. So uh, inking around some of the white areas, uh, some of the back areas as I'm filling in, I'll go really quickly. I'll ink around the Hulk's uh, fingers. And then just a few more lines and then this head will be done. More taper lines, some thicker taper lines, some thinner ones. I'll keep going in there, filling in. I'm zooming in closer so you guys can see more detail. Right here, I'm going from uh, thick to thin. Uh, nothing wrong with that. Uh, I'm just more comfortable going from thin to thick. Uh, you should practice, if you're learning, you should practice going from thin to thick as well as thick to thin. Uh, if you're able to go, bo uh, go both ways, it's going to come in handy for you uh, every now and then. Uh, I can go both ways and then every now and then I'll go uh, th thick to thin, but uh, I like going uh, thin to thick because it's just faster for me. Okay, fill in the blacks. After filling the blacks, I'm con going to continue doing the contour lines of the hair, the outside. Again, drawing two lines, filling in, press down as hard as I can just to get that line thicker. So you don't have to go back in there and fill in the blacks. Uh, uh, you don't have to uh, concentrate that much to fill in the blacks to try to get to the edge. So I'm going in there with a brush and I'm trying to press down as thick as I can. Okay, start really thin contour correctly be sure the contours flow th flows through the other brushes adding that extra thin hair right over there and then i'll add a halo for the hair so you can see that thin hair continuing from inside of the black so your black is not just a solid solid black area you want it to have some kind of 3d form in there like a the hair is sticking sticking out from inside of the black and it's fun, fun to do where you're adding like little halos, like there, I added an extra strand of hair just cause it, just cause I think it looks cooler. Okay, so more lines over here, fill those in, add more, try to ink around, create some halo. Halo is where you're separating two blacks with a white line, uh, just cause it looks cool. 
Okay, turn the, turn the artwork around and then just continue and key that. Okay, add, add some extra lines here and there. Filling in, look how shiny that ink looks. Uh, that's because the, the brush just holds, it holds a lot of ink. Now, if you wanted to get one of these brushes on your own, I added links below in the description that you can order. Uh, that link will lead you to my Amazon affiliate page where you will see some of the other tools that I use. Tools, brushes, inks, quills, anything there. So anytime you see something that you, that you want to order, uh, please feel free to order using my links because when you do, I get a little bit of kickback. Much, much appreciated. So here I'm inking more of a hawk's hair. Filling in as I'm going. Uh, at this point, I'm pretty much almost done with the whole page. Uh, this was the last one. You notice that I will ink uh, smaller heads first, and I'll go from the smaller heads to the larger heads. Uh, this area was the largest because it's just easier to ink larger. Uh, when I'm inking small, you need to concentrate. Uh, I have to concentrate much more to make sure I get all the lines correctly, but with large areas, it's just much faster and much easier. Okay, right now I'm concentrating on making sure some of those lines are, are smooth. I don't want any uh, jagged curves over there. I want them to be as smooth as I can. I want them to be uh, continuous flowing as nicely as I can. Okay, so right now I'm just filling in the blacks, uh, going in any direction. Uh, actually, when I'm doing this, my, my brain and my head is on autopilot, I'm not really concentrating much and I'm just filling, filling it in. Okay, when I'm making the holding line and the eyeline, I need to concentrate uh, and I need to think about what needs to be inked, uh, where it needs to be thinner, where it's uh, darker. But filling in bags just very easy, like like hosting comes on automatically. So here's this page, Incredible Hulk uh, issue 717. You'll see all the hair that I've inked on this page. Right over here, here's this one. Here's a small one that I did earlier. Okay, and then some of the eyebrows over here and then the girl's hair added some white lines in between i didn't add i just inked around uh, the incredible hulk's uh, larger hair and right there all the hair and sometimes i'll go back in there and add more inks just to make those uh, inks really nice and rich and black watching this episode of Wall Wild Art and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how I approach uh, inking hair. So for those of you who want to try your hand on inking hair or any other techniques that I show in this video as well as my other videos, I added links below, below where you can see all the tools that you can order. Anytime you order from any of those links, I get a little bit of kickback which helps support me in making these videos for you. I also have a Patreon page. Uh, check that out. Over there, I put uh, exclusive content and things that you don't see anywhere else in, in any of my social media sites, like sneak peeks and uh, projects I'm working on, things like that. Uh, check that out, and that also helps support me in making these videos for you. Um, and my new website just launched. Check that out. Very excited. I'm very excited for that. That website name is waldenwaldart.com. I'll add links below. And then check out my website. So please like share and subscribe to my channel and hit the notification button so anytime i upload videos and you hit the notification button you'll get you'll be the first to see some of my new videos so check it out until next time i hope you enjoy this video and some of my previous videos and try your head on inking hair have a good day